Here's the base of the machine. I'm filling the sides up to the mounting holes with uh, epoxy granite all the way front and back. So it's gonna connect this uh, backspacer on well, more solid, and these front ones. I'm still gonna do the other side, obviously. I'll do that one tomorrow, hopefully. It's gonna be very heavy. <laughs> Here's the result. Quite a bit more uh, mass, it's very solid looking. Once I, uh, it's not completely cured yet. Once I uh, sand off the corner and paint it, it should look pretty nice. Got a little bit of a wrinkle in my uh, vinyl that I was using as a seal. Yeah, I've definitely, this is a good, good addition, I think. I could block these off and then fill in there and there and there. Not sure if I will. Got it attached with epoxy. Used 20 ounces of JV Weld, still have gaps, unfortunately. Good thing is the uh, gaps are all up towards the top as I filled the bottom basically and let it flow up from the sides. And uh, so I'll just fill the rest with epoxy concrete, which I'm gonna, you know, I'm planning on filling these gaps anyway. So it'll just be like a smooth transition right there. And uh, yeah. Then I'm going to epoxy the risers on, uh, then mount the rails with epoxy and uh, copper wire. It should be much more rigid. It's going to weigh a lot more, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, uh, I got my seal on here. Uh, it's just vinyl, and uh, I cleaned everything and descaled it. Took all the paint off. Uh, filled a couple of holes that I have for my linear uh, rail mounting holes. I filled those and cleaned them. Cleaned off, I filled them with uh, silicone. I guess it's like silicone, it's heavy duty adhesive. Uh, just to keep the epoxy from going out those holes, which would be bad, because then I'd have to drill new mounting holes for my rails, which would be tricky. Uh, and then, so you gotta make sure that, you know, epoxy is not going where you don't want it, basically. Uh, this doesn't super matter uh, for me because I don't really care what it looks like. I just want it to be heavy <laughs> and absorb vibrations. Uh, so, plus the epoxy is really not that hard to remove anyway. You know, a file or sandpaper takes it off uh, easily. It's not that hard. So, uh, and then I'm going to take a basically put support boards to support this and then you tape this to the boards to make it taut so that it comes out pretty smooth. Uh, but yeah, I'm basically just casting one side at a time because I don't want to build a giant complex mold. It does take longer this way just because you know, you're doing multiple days of curing because this stuff takes at least 24 hours. I mean, this stuff is still kind of soft. I did this one yesterday. This one is really hard because I did it two days ago. I'm gonna put those on and uh, show you what it looks like. All right, here it is ready to pour. So uh, basically just, I just stretch the vinyl to where it's pretty taut all the way around. These are just some uh, semi-rigid boards to uh, you know resist the push of the epoxy, which uh, I mean, isn't much. I'm only doing it about an inch thick, so yeah. And uh, now, uh, also I have this, Sawzall, which will shake. I'll just tape the trigger down. That would be probably about like that to shake this and get the air bubbles out. I also have a heat gun to pop the bubbles. And uh, yeah, I basically just pour it a little bits at a time and uh, let the air kind of come out of it and shake up. So yeah, ready to go. I got the second side of the column cured. It is quite thick. It's 
much heavier than it was. Uh, so now I'm gonna do the inch to the back side of this thing. I thought about putting some on the inside, but uh, I'd have to measure my uh, ball nut to see if it would fit, depending how much I put in there. Not sure if I will or not. This thing's gonna be pretty beefy as is. Here's my little pouring setup. I got epoxy. This is uh, two to one. I've noticed this stuff, the resin, or the hardener is much uh, lighter weight than the resin. So it's slowly, I'm using too much hardener basically. Uh, so I, I'm gonna go a little bit easy on that. Maybe it'll buy like five grams. Uh, we'll see. Solo cup, I found it easier to mix in small batches. Uh, I make it a little bit thin at about, you know, four to one. Uh, got a spade bit in my drill and sand. I have more available close by. Basically, I'm going to do about uh, 50 grams of this tabletop resin and then uh, maybe 45 grams of the hardener and mix it in here. I mix, I mix that up first uh, for probably a couple minutes uh, with a drill, making sure to get all the nooks and crannies inside the cup. Uh, and then I add the sand 100 grams at a time. If you add more than that, it will all go to the bottom and it makes it really hard to mix and you'll get some that's not, you know, mixed as well. So that's pretty much it there. Things at work are very slow. So uh, I have time to work on my milling machine a little bit. These I uh, turned on the lathe, <laughs> two inch uh, Mike six aluminum, uh, you know, just faced them down to size and then pinned and epoxy them into the casting. Uh, with JB Weld, and then uh, basically cast this extra bit of epoxy onto it. So it's pretty uh, pretty solid. I still have to drill and tap right here for the linear rails. This is the column, which is huge, and uh, these are two three eighths thick by a uh, three inch angle iron that I tacked together and then epoxied on with 20 ounces of JB Weld. And I'm adding an inch of epoxy granite to each side. So there's gonna be an inch here, another inch on here, and then another inch on the other side. So you can see it is gonna be very beefy when it's done. But uh, yeah, hopefully get a lot more done, but coronavirus kind of sucks. We are really slow at work. Not good for long term. All right, I got the uh, final on, which will block the uh, epoxy and granite from getting everywhere. And I got to put the uh, support pieces on there to hold the vinyl. I got my uh, boards on there. I need to, I'm gonna put some uh, four by six boards up against these so that'll hold those in place left and right and then i'm going to start mixing and pouring epoxy i got this thing poured uh it's probably a little bit under an inch but uh i don't know i feel like that's enough <laughs> so uh this time this thing i run like the whole time basically at a reasonable speed i check it every once in a while make sure it's not getting hot uh, and that just shakes all the bubbles out and pushes the sand to the bottom uh, so on mine, I do like a pretty thin mix. Uh, I'm doing, uh, I think three to one. Uh, so a uh, hundred grams of epoxy to 300 grams of sand. Uh, on these, I doubled the amount. So I went with a larger container, just a uh, creamer container. And uh, I did 200 and uh, 600 grams of sand. So yeah, I still have a ton of epoxy left. This stuff, it just doesn't take that much. I bought a two gallon kit and it's done everything I've done so far. So yeah. Um, so yeah, I mix it a little bit thin so that it settles really well. And cause it's, it's you know, I do it kind of fast. I just, just mix it with a drill. Cause I, the worst, the, the last thing I want to happen is to have <laughs> uh, uncured epoxy. So I mix it really, really well. And this stuff cures for a long time. Uh, it's like 24 hours. And that's like to get like relatively firm. 
but uh, about 48 for like full hardness, depending on the temperature, obviously. It's kind of cold here right now. Uh, so, and plus it's really hard to get the bubbles out when it's thick. So yes, I'm sacrificing some weight and some, I'm using more epoxy, but it just makes it a lot easier. Uh, it like pours and spreads out thin or spreads out flat. So uh, you don't have to worry about trying to get it flat basically. Uh, <clears throat> and I just, I just find that a lot easier. On the base, I did it the other way. I made it to where it was like almost like a, a paste and it was really hard to spread and it was really hard to uh, get it to be flat basically. Uh, and then the last pour I did on that one, I put like a, a really thin layer and basically on this, they'll probably end up being like an eighth of an inch thick of solid epoxy with not very much sand in it. And then from then down, it will be very solid. And, uh, I just mix, I just let this thing go. I add, you know, I'll pour a bunch right here and I'll pour a bunch right here and they'll kind of meet in the middle and flatten out. And since I make them, since I do a pour smaller batches, the air has time to escape and uh, basically this thing shakes the whole time and I pop it a few times, pop all the bubbles a few times with a heat gun. Let me show you that now. Obviously don't want to get too hot, it'll probably burn and mess it up. So just keep the heat gun moving. And just pop all the bubbles. Uh, I'm gonna sand and paint the whole thing, so uh, I don't want to show it too much. But, uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really weigh how much I put on this time. Uh, as far as like totals, I think it did. Let me see. That'd be 800 grams times, um, how many did I pour? Maybe seven, I think something like that. So, I mean, it's quite a bit, probably, uh, six or eight pounds. Uh, I'll weigh it when it's done. But, uh, yeah, it should be very, uh, after this thing's done, it's gonna be very rigid and very dampening. Uh, the only, the weakest part of the G0704 is how this uh, thing bolts to the base. It's uh, not ideal. Bolts onto the back, which is kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, I'm actually planning on epoxy bedding it to the base. Uh, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> so, yeah, that's where I'm at now. And I just gotta wait a few days for this thing to cure and uh, go from there.